All right, we're doing a rank beginner Skagit or spay casting or a struggling spay caster video to help you if you're having some issues with your casting. So if you have a brand new Skagit outfit and you're gonna go cast, remember to always cast away from the wind. So if the wind's hitting on the left side of your face, cast on your right side and vice versa. Second thing to remember is keep your hands in front of you and try to use your bottom hand to do the sweep and stuff and this will help you if you're having problems blowing a lot of anchors. And the third thing and maybe the most important if you're struggling or if you're just starting out try to remember that it's basically Skagit casting and spay casting is, if you can think of it more like doing a roll cast, you'll have a lot more success. With a short length of line and a sink tip, it's real easy to do a dynamic roll cast or a jump roll cast by just sliding the line next to you, building a D-loop and roll casting it forward. So you see guys going out to the river, doing their double spay action and just peeling, ripping the line around and rearing back and having a terrible time blowing anchors and and then to, to cast back downstream, they'll just nonchalantly whip a nice little roll cast back there and it'll be beautiful. So there's a disconnect between trying to interpret Skagit casting or spay casting and just uh, natural little roll cast that is pretty easy to do with the Skagit heads and the Scandinavian, the short heavy shooting head. Here's another little dynamic roll cast where the fly never leaves the water. A little bit longer line, build a little D-loop, roll cast it forward and it flies with little effort. So if you think of the names like the snap T and the double spay, Think of those, I, I'm just hoping that this will help you. I'm not trying to rewrite any books on spay casting or gadget casting. All I'm saying is, if you think of those as ways to get that fly in position so you can do a roll cast, that'll, that'll simplify it. Gonna flip a little roll cast downstream with this super short head, and then I'm gonna set it for a double spay only I'm not going to get too excited about peeling a lot of line across the water. I'm going to lift it. I'm going to gather my wits and do a nice little roll cast and rely on the weight of that Skagit head to bend the rod enough to make the cast. Short little cast, not perfect, but good enough. Now I'm going to snap to it, take my time, lift and just roll cast it back out. Now I'm gonna use a little bit longer length of line and do a regular peri poke. I'm gonna let it soak and then do a little bit of a peel, get a little bit of a more dynamic D-loop and make the cast. Just to make certain, I'm going to show you, see this skinny running line right here? That's the part that you keep inside the guides. This heavy, girthy line, the Skagit head, or Scandinavian head, whatever you have, that just, this goes out the end of the rod tip. You can even start with this much, you know, if you have a spay line, just cast 15 or 20 feet to start off with. We're gonna cast like two-thirds of the head or work towards getting the whole head out. I'm gonna show the D-loop drill and how you, if you can just start off flipping short little casts and then work your way out, you'll, you'll be much better off. But don't get hung up on shooting line. Make a proper cast, use proper form, and then you can work later on shooting some line. I have a very short high visibility shooting head with a 12 foot 
sink tip and three foot of mono leader with a slightly weighted fly. I'm just flipping some little D loops around and watching them. This is a really cool way to see what your D loop is doing and then when you have it ready you can flip a little cast out there. I'm just going back and forth watching my D loop. Okay here comes a decent one right there. A forward cast any time in there would flip the line out. You don't have to cast it, you can just watch it and get an idea for what your D-loop's doing. There's another nice, decent one to cast. That would lift a sink tip, light sink tip out of the water. There's another one. There's a good one, and I flip it out. Reposition the line, and then just continue doing the little D-loop drill. Watch your D-loops. There's a good one. And I cast it, it kind of sinks back into the water, but you get the idea. It's beginning caster video, so that's, that's a beginner cast. I'll probably make several beginner casts by the one time this is over. There's a little flip, nothing wrong with that. You just want to get the idea of what that D-loop's doing and watch it and slow yourself down. There's one right there. I let that sink in. Make another big one. Yeah, that anchor's a little too close to me, but anyway, that's how big a D loop can be and have that fly next to you. The basic idea is that it doesn't take much of a production to make a nice D loop that'll cast easy. If, if you are having trouble with blowing anchors, another thing you can do in Skagit casting is to let your fly soak after you plop it down, set your anchor, let it soak, 1001, 1002, and then that way if you really feel that you have to peel back with a lot of power, you'll be less likely to pull the anchor, to blow your, you'll be less likely to blow your anchor, that's it. <laughs> if you are using a heavy Skagit shooting head, instead of beginning your peel right away, try letting it soak. Set the anchor, 1001, 1002. Then I begin my double spay. Again, set the anchor, 1001. Begin the cast. If you let your anchor soak for just a second or two, it helps it dig in and makes it less likely to blow if you have a really powerful sweep. Another thing to note is guys like George Cook and Tom Larimer incorporate more traditional styles where they, after setting the anchor, will lift and then sweep. And if you do it that way, it works really good. You just have to add a little more oomph into your back cast or into the sweep. If you do use the peel, you try to get the line peeling right away. And once you hit that speed, you don't accelerate. That's kind of the differences in the two styles, but they both work really good. And the important thing, I think, is to not wear your body out, but to have a nice, relaxing day of casting, fishing, where you don't feel tired out, but you let your rod do the work by using proper technique. All right, beginning, rank, beginner, start again. <laughs> First thing to remember if you're <laughs> casting and you're blowing a lot of D loops, you're blowing your anchor. Holy crap, let's start over. Good. There's an airplane now. <laughs> Freaking downtown. Make, make it easier for you. And so the first thing always with begin and spay casting is to make sure that there's a freaking siren going off. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Let's see. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> 